surgery tomorrow, tomorrow morning. <sighs> Surgery's gonna suck. So exactly what I'm having done is we're replacing my ACL, we're using a cadaver Achilles, and we are gonna scrape or uh, clean up the backside of my patella, which is trash. It's supposed to be nice and clean and smooth, but it's not. It's uh, garbage. And then scoop out what other foreign bodies I've still got floating around. Um, and then we're gonna implant cartilage. This is called an oats procedure. And this is the one where rehab's gonna be tricky. This is what's gonna put me in the straight leg brace for like six to eight weeks with like toe touch pressure on crutches. I have to say, I'm actually I'm pretty nervous. Um, I've never, I've never had to deal with something like that for rehab. I've never had to not be functional. I've never had to really be waited on for any amount of time. I've never been, I mean, look, I'll be fine, right? As long as I can be up and around and on crutches, I'll, I'll manage, I'll, I'll manage fine. I know, I know that that's what I'll do. Now, like PT and rehab are gonna start uh, like immediately. Back to the video where Kelly and I uh, talk about my rehab plan. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I've got the assault bike, so I can do, like I've said before, I can do both hands and one leg and then have the straight leg just off to the side. This doesn't have to be hammering, it doesn't have to be abusive, but it's something I can do to burn some calories, elevate my heart rate and stay intact, uh, keep muscles firing and keep things working so that I'm not gonna atrophy so much. Uh, the other thing is gonna be really utilizing the different muscle stim units I have, whether that's gonna be the Mark Pro or the Power Dot. These two will really be the ones I use the most. Uh, Power Dot is just, for me, it's better than the Compex. It seems to be uh, just more, it does everything the Compex does, but it's more convenient. The Mark Pro, however, is a little different. The Mark Pro only has like two settings, like a high and a low, which basically can just give a, a consistent pump. Uh, and that's really what I'm gonna need post-surgery to run for like that first week, like almost just all day. Just gonna let it sit and run and work on the quad and try to get that quad moving. I've also got exercise I can like immediately start doing, right? Where I'm gonna engage the quad and cause it to flex, pick up from the hip flexor and start making sure that leg is firing. That's one of the big issues people have after surgery is kind of like nerve block wears off and stuff like that. And then, and then they don't ever learn how to turn their body back on. So that's really what I'm gonna avoid is that's, that's like goal number one. After that, um, you know, the other big picture priority stuff is stick to the diet, stick to the plan. Been a little loose the last couple of days. Thanksgiving, what are you gonna do, right? But really stick to it while I'm less active. I know I can justify eating a little shittier or a little bit extra calories if I've got time to go spend in the gym to burn those calories, right? And build muscle and burn fat. Well, I'm not gonna be doing fuck all for probably, I say a week. I bet there's a week I do very fucking little. But what I can start doing, right? Push-ups. I can also do seated stuff. I can, uh, you can seated press, I can seated row. I've got options, but a lot of it's gonna be upper body. Lower body, not so much. I'm not gonna really get any action. That's fine. Because as long as you're working and you're, and you're staying active, the body tends to think that everything's active. So, you know, in say four weeks, I can definitely start figuring something out. I'll definitely be on the assault bike, right? And keeping some muscle stimulus going. But right away, not so much. The other stuff I've got going on, I've got to get back into writing. I need to get back into writing. I have another book planned for you guys, and uh, I'm going to knock that out. And uh, probably while I'm high on painkillers, give, give some different thoughts. I don't know. It's not going to be training, right? It's going to be more of this type of stuff, this insight, these thoughts, these experiences that I've had over the last 20 years of being in the gym, these 20 years of meeting people and coaches and being an athlete in track and field, powerlifting, weightlifting, strongman, I've done CrossFit and Highland Games. I have a little bit of everything and I kind of have got to know guys on top in all of those aspects. And there's been some great insights that I've got to pick up and I'm just going to try to share as much of that as I can with you guys. Kind of 
less protocol, more philosophy. I think of it more as a, like teach you how to fish, right? Because you understand the reason why you're doing stuff, like you can do your own program, it's not that tough. Or maybe not your whole, whole program, but you can definitely sort out a lot of your own problems and not be so stressed about some things because a lot of the stuff people stress about doesn't matter. And that, that goes for me as well, which I have to remind myself. So back to surgery. I'm not 100% sure how bad they're gonna cut me open, but I think it's basically just like straight down the front of the knee. Ugh. So now I'll probably be two weeks in that with a, I think that's my post-op is two weeks in. So I'm sure they'll pull staples and do all that type of stuff. <sighs> I'm really bummed. <laughs> I definitely don't have the anxiety that I've had in the past to like a pre-surgery day. Today I just didn't. It's just, all right, we're just going tomorrow and do this. It's one of those things. But I'm really going to do my best to keep up with you guys and kind of share how I'm feeling and my progress and where I'm at. And I'm going to need to lean on you guys for motivation as well and support uh, since I'm going to be trapped for a while at home, like till the first of the year. We're going to keep at it. That's, that's the big thing, right? This is such a small setback. And mentally, it's going to be really tricky for me to... Like, I don't know if I'll compete this next year. I don't know if I'll be healthy enough. I don't know if I'll be ready. I know world championships and the games that matter aren't going to be until, like, September. Yeah. All in September is when it's going to be. I know that we have a world championships in Holland. There's a trip to South Africa in June, which I may just go to that and not throw. Um, and then, you know, Pleasanton and Celtic are all gonna be around the same time. And those games are the reason I do the sport. And if I'm not healthy enough to be competitive, if I'm just gonna go and suck and finish DFL in every event, like I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. There's somebody who has a better chance of throwing than me doing that. And I feel really shitty taking another person's divert, deserving spot to go. And look, the way the Highland Games work is I would probably get invited. I've been one of the top guys in the world for six years they're gonna probably invite me so it'll be up to me to be able to <laughs> be able to make the right decision you know I think that's what needs to be done I think I think that's an honest thing I've tried to stand for kind of no bullshit in the sport and that would be one if I just went to fucking suck it up and take that check when somebody else has busted their ass and earned that spot should get to go I'll earn a spot back once I'm healthy I can do that. They don't tend to deny the top guys in the world. That's just how it works. But once you're kind of in, you're in. And that's what I'll be sad about, right, is not getting to travel and hang out with the guys. That's the, that's the tough part of saying, like, committing to rehab and taking the step back to, to try to be better over the long run. And that's what I've got to do because I really don't want reconstruction on my knee. I really don't need to fucking do that before I'm 50. Um, I mean, I'm going to have knee problems forever. This isn't a, like a fucking fix. I'm not going to be nice to this thing once we sort it out this weekend. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give it the proper time and rehab of six months. And as, as it allows me to do more, I'm going to do more. But I want to get back to where I can train the way I like to train. I want to get back to train the way that makes me a better thrower. I want to throw more. I want to jump. I want to sprint. I want to do things like that. I want to squat without pain in my fucking knee. I want to be explosive and get back to Olympic lifting. I can't wait. I can't wait for that. And that's what I've got to remember is that this is a fucking step of progress to get there. The road I'm on right now is going to continually go downhill because I, because I'm broken. I'm never going to be able to dig out of this. I can try to slow down the, the you know, deceleration of strength and me, me being able to throw, but it's just going to get worse. I got to fix this to move forward, or at least for the opportunity to move forward. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is it. And, and so fucking be it. If it is, I've had an amazing time traveling the world and competing, and I'll figure out another way to be part of a group that gets to do that and hang out. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but this is just another step in the road. I mean, I would have happily traded my knee for all the experiences I've had over the last seven and eight years of traveling and competing in the Highland Games. Happily. It's just time to get to work. It's time to, to buckle down and get it fucking done. It's not going to be cool. We're going to have to get creative. And I hopefully try to share as much of that as you guys can see. I mean, there's a lot of fitness YouTubes out there. A lot of vlogs and a lot of options. And I think, I think my story is unique as far as being a top athlete in a strength sport. 
um, as well as trying to travel and do some different stuff with life. I'm not a physique guy. I'm not doing bodybuilding. I am fucking training for performance, period. And I'm going through a major surgery, and you guys are going to get to watch the bulk of that rehab. Watch it get better. Watch me go through it. We went through a little one previous in the year in March, but this is the big one. So, like, the entire last rehab was six weeks or eight weeks. I really didn't feel better until about four months. So I imagine... I imagine realistically for me to be back at 100%, I think a year. And if that's true, if I'm a fucking back at like a real 100% for me at this time next year, like watch the fuck out come 18. I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to fucking get back out there and party and fucking throw and let them have it. <sighs> All right, so that's it. Surgery tomorrow. I'm sure you guys will see bits and pieces of that. Have a great day. And as always... Spread hate, always farting.